Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and this is episode 45. Thank you so much for joining me this week. I want to extend a very special thank you to those Patreon subscribers who support this show week in and week out. You are the reason that I am able to continue recording and continue jumping in front of the camera every week. So thank you so much to that, that community. You guys are amazing. And yeah, thank you. So there is quite a lot going on. For those who are Fiber Club subscribers, your Fiber is in the mail. It left us last week and hopefully you will be receiving it soon. For those in workshops and are, who are supposed to be receiving PDFs for various things, workshops, Thoughtful Spinner, you should have received your PDF and if you haven't, please let me know as soon as possible so that you can get caught up for this month. I have a few things to mention that are going on in the Ravelry group. We have some spin-alongs and knit-alongs that are going to be wrapping up in the next few weeks. We are getting to the end of 2016, which I just don't know where the time is going. So the fall clear-out spin-along that's been going on this fall is um, coming to an end in the next few weeks. There may or may not be a few prizes drawn from the discussion thread. This is a spin along to clear off your bobbins, clear off languishing projects, clear off stuff that's been sort of there for the better part of the year and you just want to get it done or it's stuff that's been hanging over you that you haven't even started and you just want to get it done for the next couple weeks. That is the spin along for you and again that is called the fall clear out spin along. The other one that is sort of wrapping up for this year, but it will resume again in J January of 2017 is called the Zero to Hero Spackle. It is a spin along, knit along, or a spin along, weave along, whatever your choice is to do with your uh, hand spun. This has been going on all year. So for those who have finished your projects and you haven't shared them in the FO thread, it is a chatter free thread, but please throw your pictures in there because there may or may not be a couple of prizes drawn at the end of the year for that as well. I mentioned last week that I will be taking the last two weeks of December off for the holiday season. So the final show of the year will be uh, the third to last Friday of December. There will be still three shows in December, which is awesome. And yeah, like I said, there might be some prizes. I wanted to announce a new spin along that's just going to be on in the Ravelry group. It's going to go from now until Christmas. It's for those of us who have the odd project here and there that we are trying to just get done because it's a gift or it's something for ourselves that we want to wear or it's something that we promised we'd have finished and it's not done yet. I'm calling this the blast off along. Um, it can be knitting, spinning, crochet, weaveling. It does not matter. I have a pair of socks. Excuse the crinkling. I'll try and keep it away from the mic. I have a pair of socks that I really want to make for my husband. I talked about this fiber last week when I had dyed it. I have broken it up into little nests. I need to get it spun so and then I need to get a knit I have a month and a half um, I think I can do it I have done hand spun socks in that um, time frame before I've put everything else to the side except for one project which I'll talk about today and I want to get these done so I need your motivation and inspiration and help to get these done so for the blast off along it is for anybody who just wants to get something done and they have a deadline in mind Christmas Hanukkah whatever um, this will end at the end of the year. I don't have prizes for this one. It's just trying to get everybody on board. All those of us who have projects that have been, we've been putting off that we need to get done for a specific uh, reason. This is for you. So that'll be in the Ravelry group, and it's called the Blast Off. So um, please join, head on over there to join us if you would like to. I have a couple of giveaways to talk about this show, which is kind of exciting. Uh, one of the giveaways that I need to mention is the Suka Plucky, uh Spinner's Control Card. I have not heard from Marina, so please, please, Marina, if you have not seen last week's show or if you are just watching this now, please get in touch with me over the next couple of weeks. I will hold your uh, control card until the end of November, and if I don't hear from you, I will um, give it away on the last show of the year um, in December. So. Marina, if you could please let me know um, your mailing address, um, either in Ravelry or via email, which is rachel at wellfordpearls.com. I'd really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, the other giveaway that I have to announce is supposed to be a giveaway for November. And I think what we'll do is I really like to run the giveaways over the course of a month because it often takes time to see the show, get into Ravelry, 
get your thoughts organized. Like it just takes time. And I figure giving through two or three weeks to sort of allow that to happen is really important. So I think we will run this a little bit longer than just the last week of November. I think we'll maybe do, run it until the end of the first week of December. Um, this is from my dear friend Katrina. She has gifted the podcast a rainbow gradient of her 100% BFL uh, it's about two ounces for the nests of fiber and she labels every individual nest with which one to spin next. So it doesn't matter which color you spin with, but she gives you the uh, color sequence for you to spin in. They are beautifully prepped and she really does a beautiful job, not only of presentation, but of making sure that the colors shift from one to the next in a really um, beautiful manner. So the only thing that you need to do for this spin along, uh, or for, sorry, for this giveaway for this month is to answer the question, what would you do with this gradient set of fiber if you were the one to win it? You can answer that question in the November episode thread in the Ravelry group. And Katrina is actually the featured spinner spotlight hand spinner this month for in on the blog on wellforpearls.com so please look for her story and for her journey later this month i think that's it for housekeeping no that's not all for housekeeping i it is the second show of the month so we need to award the mug for the patreon support for this month I'm going to change things a little bit as of this month. Um, there, I was chatting with a couple of different people. This didn't just come from one person. It came from a couple of people. Um, because of VAT taxes, handling charges, um, and just general postage issues that people are having with receiving stuff, um, the when something's mailed out as a, as a prize or a giveaway or whatever, in some countries people are being charged once they get the item. So instead of continuing to just do the mug and to send that out um, sort of as a, you know, thank you so much and here you go. This is for Patreon subscribers. Um, I thought that I would offer an, a choice. So from now on, you can either choose the mug or if you know that you maybe you're going to get whacked with handling charges or you and you would prefer not to pay those or you know that you're going to end up paying more for those than you would have paid just to buy the mug in the store kind of thing. Um, you can also choose a set of my stitch markers. So those are listed in the Etsy shop. You can choose any set that you would like and you just have to let me know what ones you'd like to choose. So this month's winner is Lainey, which is awesome because I was just chatting with her over the weekend about storage bobbins in the um, Slack channel. So Lainey, if you could get in touch with me, please, or I will send you a message, whichever, uh, and let me know if you would like the mug or if you would like stitch markers. It's totally up to you. They're both of equal value. So please um, let me know. And congratulations to Lainey. Um, yeah, I think that's it for housekeeping. So a few weeks ago, I had talked about Neat's Foot Oil and I had talked about using it when I spun the Coopworth. And I wanted to mention that a couple of the ladies at Guild, one in particular was really helpful and let me know that one of the great, best places to buy Neat's Foot Oil is actually at a saddlery. So that anywhere that sells horse equipment, saddles, anything that's like leather, great place to get it. You can get it in bulk. We have, I, I happen to live in the horse capital of Western Canada. <laughs> um, so we have more horses per capita than we have people. <laughs> which is funny because you'd think that would be somewhere in Alberta, but it's not. Um, it just happens to be um, here in this particular suburb in Vancouver, in in the outskirts of Vancouver. Um, so I have a local saddle read to me and I went in there and they had a huge bottle and it wasn't very expensive at all. And I'm gonna spread it out and share it with my friends. So uh, please, for Neat's Foot Oil, please check out your local saddle read because you'll probably um, find what you're looking for there. Um, and you won't pay the prices that you would pay in a natural food store where you're getting like a little bottle of extract, which isn't really what you want. Um, so yeah, that is it. The other question, so I received a question in um, the Ravelry group and uh, via private message and then another message on, Inst on in, uh, YouTube and then another one on Instagram 
I've had this same question from quite a number of people and so I thought that I would really quickly talk to how I um, get and buy fiber. This is, seems to be a really common question for many new spinners and I it seems like it's not really something that's talked about so I thought I would just take a moment and chat about it. I'm going to put in some photos so that you can have a look at sort of what I'm talking about as I mention it and I am going to read off of what I wrote so that it's succinct and I don't get sidetracked. So if you're looking for raw wool or unprocessed fleeces, I highly recommend checking out your local weaving or spinning guild. Even if no one in the guild itself is into sheep husbandry, someone will know someone who they can put you in touch with. As well, checking out your local sheep producers association is a great place for resources. Even though most sheep producers, especially in North America, are farming for meat, there will be a couple who are willing to save the fiber for you or who already shear and process their rovings. If not, they may have information about who does or why in your particular area they choose not to because sometimes there's reasons. Um, I know a friend of mine ran into with somebody she was chatting with locally. They None of the fa farmers in that particular area kept their fleeces because it would mean that they would have to coat the sheep because they had such high degrees of rainfall. They were willing to work with her and try coating and try what that looked like um, but sometimes there's a reason. Um, the for and sometimes their breeds are really hardy like they're not breeds that you would want for a hand spinner's fleece in the first place. For rovings that are slightly more processed, like scoured and cleaned, look at mills that are localish to you. This is a little bit more difficult to stay immediately local because there are fewer and fewer working mills, but call them and find out if you can purchase rovings that are uh, ready for the commercial yarn processing and find out if you can purchase them before they start spinning. The reason I think it's a good reason to call is because some mills don't list all of their products on their website and they may have products that are particularly good for hand spinners. After the initial carding process, comb top goes on to be placed on car combing machines, so there's an extra step. Some mills don't do this, but if you call your local mill, which probably produces wool and yarns, so they only do roving, they may know another mill with capabilities to create top. Call them. As well, some of the larger distributors of wool and fiber like Louette or the Woolery are great places if you're in the US to start. Although you'll end up with larger um, half, although you won't probably end up with larger than half pound quantities. Um, if you want larger than half a pound, you again, ch check with the mills. And check with the Woolery or send a note to Louette and find out if you can buy stuff in a larger quantity. You usually have to spend a certain amount to get a wholesale account. So if you don't want to go that route, you can find out if you can get a discount for ordering more on a one-time basis. Lastly, if you're looking for hand-dyed comb top, hand-carded bats or roving, or any other specialty product related to spinning, ask local friends. If no one near you spins, hop onto Ravelry and ask there. I personally try not to recommend individual dyers because I... I'm in a particular area of the world and there are many, many people out there who are creating amazing things and you might not want to pay huge shipping fees to get somebody, somebody's product from here when there's maybe somebody local to you that you could support. So I hope this helps and feel free to post in our Ravelry group your location and what you're looking for and I know because of the type of community that we have that people will help you find fiber. <laughs> Um, we had a thread going in the Ravelry group a little while ago that was um, where to buy stuff and I think people found that really helpful. So please go on and find that. It's still there um, and you can post where you are and what you're looking for. All right, I have a couple of things to share with you today. It's not a lot because I haven't been doing a lot. I worked all weekend and it's been particularly tiring around here for various reasons. Um, the first thing that I spun this past week and I did it in under an hour and if you follow me on Instagram you would have seen a black and white photo of this yarn. I usually don't share Sweet Georgia's yarns spoilers for Fiber Club until the end of the month so I spin Sweet Georgia yarns as Fiber Club every month for them and I photograph it and write a brief blog post about it and I usually don't share it until the end of the month 
But this month I'm going to share it right away because I'm actually going to pop this onto the needles immediately and knit something up out of it for someone. So this is 100% Wensleydale. It came out beautifully, um, if I do say so myself. It has a gorgeous halo, um, which you can probably see a little bit of. It The colors were inspired by a local area to us here in Vancouver called False Creek. So if you've ever been here, if you were here for the Olympics or if you saw any of the Olympic coverage back in 2010, where the Olympic Village was, was is False Creek. Um, and these really are the colors of the water and the scenery around that area. Um, Color aside, this month was just wonderful to spin. Um, I got a sport weight. It's 164 yards, and Wensleydale is quite a heavy, dense fiber, so I wasn't expecting any more yardage than that. I spun it short forward draw. My hands were honestly about this far apart to get the drafting zone right and to have the fibers drifting. When I, drift, when I drafted forward, for them not to catch or for my yarn to be inconsistent, I needed my hands that far apart to keep myself consistently drafting forward. Um, and I'm really happy with my consistency and how this yarn turned out. And I left it as a singles. I did full it. I put it in um, almost boiling hot water for a few, for about 10 seconds. And I put it in ice cold water and back and forth about five or six times. And it feels very strong. Um, I've pulled on it in various places and it hasn't um, felt at all not stable. Um, I just love how this turned out. I love the hand of it. It's not um, particularly rough or toothy or coarse. Uh, it's just a really lovely yarn. So what I'd like to do with this actually is whip up. It's, get, it's quite cold here. I'm wearing an alpaca shawl today. Um to ward off the cool, the cool damp weather that we've been having here. I'm actually wanting to knit a pair of fingerless mitts for myself. I have a pair that I knit last year out of, um, I guess last winter, out of Icelandic, but it's a little bit too coarse for me, even against my hands. Um, the whole time I'm wearing them, I'm kind of pulling at them and kind of using them to itch my skin. So I thought that I would knit a pair out of the out of this yarn instead, and I'm gonna knit them longer. So I'm gonna start up here at my hand. I'll do them two at a time, and I'll knit down the arm until hopefully I'm either close to or do run out of yarn. So I'm just really happy with how this turned out, and I wanted to show share it with you before I start knitting with it. I think part of what made it really sing for me. I spun it on a ratio of nine to one. And I think for this yarn, I, I was worried that it was too much twist for the staple length of the fiber and for the original twist per inch of the fiber. But I think spinning it at nine to one was actually the right thing to do because I, I wasn't worried when I was winding it off about it drifting apart. And if you've watched any of the other episodes where I talk about spinning singles yarns, I've had that happen before where I start to wind it off to skein it and it starts drifting apart in places. And this didn't at all. So I think somehow I sort of managed to get just the right amount of twist in it to still make a structurally sound yarn that's gonna be hopefully really pleasant to work with, which I'll talk about. I'll give you my reflections once I cast it on. And I think that's the trick with spinning a singles yarn. It doesn't, you don't want necessarily, for what I wanted, I didn't want an overspun yarn, but I, I needed something that was still going to hold together, even though it's a very long stapled fiber and the chances of it drifting apart are quite low. If you don't get enough twist in there, it's going to drift apart no matter what. So this really worked out well, and I'm going to document what I did so that I can hopefully reproduce it and talk a little bit more about how I did this. Um, I had a recent request for a workshop that could be um, talking about how to spin a singles yarn. And I think that I will start to develop some of that over the next uh, month or so and see if I can get some of those thoughts out in paper and if it would make sense to develop that further. So that is that yarn. I'm just totally smitten with it. The other project that I am working on, and this is actually going to go into the blast off along 
is, and the colors are going to, I think, blow out because this is really primary blue. Think like primary color wheel blue um, in a good way. Um, I just started I, I, this morning, actually. I worked all weekend and I finished my exploration station. I cast it off on Saturday night at like 10 o'clock at night and we had the time change that night so our clocks were going back an hour so I was like it's totally fine it's 10 o'clock it's actually only nine o'clock because the time's going back and I've cast it off and I'm going to bed and then I couldn't sleep <laughs> because I was so wound up from finishing it. Um, I started this toque uh, it's out of some yarn that I spun back in 2014. This is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this is Humming Bee Farm. She's local to me. This is labeled as local wool. Oh my gosh. It is, it was a really, really lovely fiber to spin. It was easy. It was easy to keep it consistent. It almost felt like Corydale. Um, I love the colors. And this is actually for my dad. So I've just cast on the brim. I'm using my own toque pattern, which is the W, uh, the whip toque, um, wraps per inch toque. Sorry, not the whip toque, the WPI toque, all capital letters, wraps per inch toque that I wrote up a couple of year, about a year ago. It's available on Ravelry. And I just cast it on. I, I'm not making any modifications. My dad has a big head. <laughs> Sorry, dad. Um, so... I've teased him before about it because every time I knit him too because I'm like oh dad I have to cast on so many stitches but he likes his stuff loose and he doesn't like it to be really fitted and he doesn't like it to be really pulling um, against his forehead which I totally understand he wears glasses and it, my husband complains about the same thing when your brims of your toques are tight and you wear glasses it really pushes in on the side of your head so I totally get it so I cast on the largest size which is an adult large and I'm actually going to be knitting the adult large slouchy version because my dad um, likes the room and the crown so that he can fold up the brim if he wants to. So um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm hopefully going to get this finished today or tomorrow and uh, it's knitting up really beautifully. I ended up upsizing from the brim. I, can't, I knit the brim in five millimeter needles and then instead of sticking with the five millimeter needles I did upgrade to this to six and a half millimeter needles uh, because again my dad just likes things a bit looser he likes the space and I've done enough toques for him now that I kind of know what I need to do to make him really happy so that's how that's knitting up and I'm really happy with the color I'm just not sure it's going to show up on the camera very well so hopefully I'll have that finished and I'll be able to show you that um, finished object next week so, and it's old, old yarn, but I'm amazed at actually how consistent it is and how well spun it is. Um, it was one of the last yarns that I spun on my Kromsky Minstrel before I sold it. And um, I was starting to really get into a groove with spinning and it, um, yeah, it kind of makes me miss that wheel now that it's gone. Cause I, um, I don't think I fully appreciated that wheel when I had it. Um, I certainly didn't use it to its full capabilities, but it was that it was keep it or be able to have a lender and I couldn't do both at that time. So, um, it just makes me really appreciate the wheel that I had, um, and enjoy the yarns that I've made since. So my parents were just in Japan for quite a long time. They were all over oh. Asia, but they did spend quite a bit of time in Japan. And I thought I would really quickly show you what they brought back for me. Um, my mom brought back a hand sewn, handmade uh, Japanese pouch for me and it's got a zipper and everything. I haven't opened it yet. Um, and I'm actually going to use it for my notions, which was really lovely because uh, I have one, but I really need a second one so I can have one in one of my knitting bags and then one um, in my other. So that was from my parents on their trip that they just got back. They've been gone for six weeks in Asia. So um, it was a lovely, thoughtful gift from them. I have a spin that I started that I didn't want to take apart on my wheel because I'm almost finished the first bobbin. Um, it, again, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen a couple of pictures of it. This is a Superwash BFL that I bought from Marianne of Smith & You up in Kamloops, British Columbia back at Knit City. It was a little bit of a splurge because I had said that I wasn't really going to buy anything, but I saw this sitting there and I just loved the colors. 
I'm spin I took the pencil roving, I divided it vertically in half. So I've got two halves that I'm spinning. I'm spinning it quite fine at about 64 wraps per inch so that I'll have a really um, nice uh, fingering weight three ply sock yarn when I'm done. I am going to chain ply it to preserve all of this color and keep it really super bright. I really wanted to make sure that this purple stayed really um, really popping because I'm going to knit a pair of socks for myself and then with the leftover yarn because I never use very much yarn to knit socks for myself. Um, I'm really lucky my feet are short. Um, I'm going to knit a pair of mittens for Nora with the leftover yarn. So this will be socks and mittens and um, I'll show you the fish finished bobbin next week because I won't have this finished but I'll have the other bobbin done. So hopefully um, that'll be done for you to show you guys. I think the last thing that I'm going to show you is I have been making progress on my fireside pullover by Jane Richmond, but I I'll save that for next week because um, I wanted to share this with you. There's a few modifications that my dad and I are in the process of talking about and and making to this project and to this loom. But my dad um, back in the summer, maybe it was the spring, made my mum and I weaving frames. And my, he used to make them for my mom back in the 80s and when my brother and I were quite young. And he, my mom kind of got away from weaving and away from doing a lot of this stuff because my mom used to do a lot of Salish knitting, uh, weaving, sorry. And um, we, yeah, she sort of just got out of the habit of doing it and doing a lot of weaving and stuff. And so the looms over time got um, misplaced. Anyways, I asked my dad to whip us up a couple of looms and I've been playing with mine because our guild in the summer of 2017 is going to be hosting a show on fiber art and my um, focus is core spun yarn. So this through here is all core spun. I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. It was really cool and really fun to cruise YouTube in the evenings, a couple of evenings last week, and just look at some of the very simple uh, weaving videos that are available to get you started. Um, there's a couple of things if I could do this over again, I would change. I would put this on the bottom and I would put this fringe that's underneath on top. Um, I just didn't think about it because it was my first time. Uh, this is all so far, this is all hand spun except for this here, um, which is Malabrigo actually from my Arica Cowl by Jane Richmond. And I haven't sort of finished some of this up here because I'm still still working on it. But I thought I would show it to you really briefly because it's just something fun. It's totally different from what I usually share. And um, I'm really enjoying it. My, I, my friend Diana has just uh, purchased a uh, rigid heddle. Ashford loom and I had been looking at them quite seriously and have been looking at them for for a while So it's been really fun to start to watch her on her journey Because she is a weaver already like she's not like me where she's uh, learning from scratch. She's done some weaving in the past already and I am really hoping that that the re so let me just back up a sec. The reason that I started knitting was because I went to learn how to weave and I couldn't accommodate a loom in my apartment at that time. So over the next few years, I'm hoping that that's something that I can add to my um, repertoire of things that I work on and make because that's really actually what I want to do. So I think that's all for today. I've talked a lot about a lot of different things. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. In Canada, tomorrow is Remembrance Day for us, and so many of us will be celebrating and remembering those lost in World War in the World Wars. Um, I all four of my grandparents served in World War II, so it's particularly um, sort of uh, meaningful for our family. And for everybody else, have a wonderful weekend and happy spinning. Bye, guys.